Right now, it is time to bring in our friends from the BerkshireEdge.com. Uh, you'll find them at the BerkshireEdge.com seven days a week, 24 hours a day, with uh, news, stories, information, uh, events all going on uh, at South County and in our area. Uh, you can also find them right here uh, on a Wednesday morning with the Berkshire Edge on Robin Hood Radio. And we say good morning to David and to Marcy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What, what is this enhanced? Enhanced, okay. Whether it's just the hurricane the, or is this not? No. What what enhanced is the National Weather Service when 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 there's a chance for thunderstorms has different classifications. If you're in an area that it, it can be marginal, it can be enhanced, and then there's two more steps that go up from that. Uh, and it's just a way of letting people know that uh, you know you have a chance for some severe weather uh, in thunderstorms. Uh, and and so people, it's in the back of their mind. It's uh, and it does work pretty well um, uh, because when they when they put it out for an area, uh, well, what, what people seem to realize when they when they hear a weather forecast or read one from the National Weather Service, they 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 localize that forecast for right where they are. Well, of course, that's not the way it is. It's in a it's in a general area, so the National Weather Service tries to cover all of it. So that's what it is. But it, no, this is a this is because. The tropical storms are down to the south in the Gulf and coming up, and there's also a front coming across from uh, from the north, which is moving uh, southeasterly. So that uh-huh. that's going to okay. cause the the airflow to do that uh, possible cyclonic stuff that it does. But that's what that all means. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Everybody else, wake up now that I finished with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I looked at uh, at the first story you've got here. And yesterday morning on Robin Hood Radio, I interviewed Richard Solon. Richard is a is a friend of mine, and he, of course, runs the Great Barrington Airport. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I decided to do uh, an interview with him because I wanted to point out how beneficial small airports are to our area. And he went on in that interview to explain a lot of stuff that goes on, uh, and a lot of training that goes on, uh, uh, in, in from even from Life Star helicopters and everything, uh, and we we asked him a little bit about the expansion project. And basically, the way he said the expansion project was was set out, he said it was it would almost be like you building garages for your cars. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and you know, and it seems it's funny the town uh, seems to ap- approve certain things and it's got to go back. Uh, you know, it's it's a strange story because the airport's been there for so so long. It has, it has, but there are uh, si- since the airport has it's, it's out in to the west of of the center of town, and uh, since then, uh, you know, people have uh, bought property and built houses and so on around it, uh, and uh, some of these people are not so uh, excited about having more and more air traffic. Uh, 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 over their over their uh, houses, and that's I think part of it is that it's uh, a NIMBY, you know, not in my backyard. Yeah, not in my backyard. But the funny thing is, is that uh, the building of the hangars isn't going to bring more air traffic. It's just going to protect the planes that are there that's already, right, right. Uh, and make the planes accessible, more accessibly and more safely stored uh, than before. So it's 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 an interesting thing. I'm going to be. It'll be interesting to see how it all works out. It it, it will, but it's it, it's it, it's kind of. Uh, um, it, it's it's a familiar story <laughs> in yeah. a way. Well, um, you know, uh, yeah, the airport is, and uh, it, it it is. It's it's it's. I don't find you know we don't live very far from it, and uh, frankly, it I I don't find the, the air traffic to be at all disruptive. You know. No, in fact, we don't live much further from it than the people who are complaining. Yeah. Do. It's just interesting when you think about the availability of that airport for Lifestar, for training, for training, uh, police do training there. I mean, yep. there's a lot of other things that go on at a locally owned airport yeah. um, that people don't don't understand. And the money they raise for charities there is, 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 is amazing yeah, as it well. Is. So, but... Um... Anyways, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how it how yeah. it, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but our our that was our one of the we had this little package of yeah. stories uh, that you're referring to, and that was 
one permit. Yeah. <laughs> but there was another one, um, the, uh, the, 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 well, yes, Guido's are, are, um, are an independent marketplace that, that is very popular. It's now going to double in size. More than double. More than double. It's going from 16,000 square feet to about 35,000 square feet. And that was passed unanimously. Yeah. No one objected to that. (laughs) (laughs) Except probably the big Y next door. (laughs) Yeah. And and then the other, the third uh, piece in that package was um, a discussion of the Housatonic Waterworks. And that's a very interesting story, actually, uh, that's... uh, will continue for a, a while uh, off and on because um, in the little village of Housatonic, which is part of the town of Great Barrington, um, has its own private water system. Um, it's, not a, it's not part of the town water system. And the, and this, the problem is that the, uh, the, the fellow that owns it, uh, Jim Mercer, uh, they really don't have enough customers to uh, to underwrite some of the repairs that really now have to be done, and um, it's a uh, it's so uh, he he does what he can, but uh, people are are finding that there's a their water in Housatonic is all cloudy and rusty, <laughs> and. So they've had a, a, a bunch of hearings about about this, and customers there are very upset. Um, and we've run pictures of their water filters, which are kind of completely clogged <laughs> with debris. Um, and uh, you know, he keeps promising, well, he'll he'll uh, flush out the uh, system, but uh, really the problem is that he just doesn't have the resources to. To, uh, to really maintain that system. You know, Falls Village uh, went through this, and they just ended up selling their water system. I think there was 128 yeah. or 138 uh, residents on the water system, yeah. and they just sold it to Aquarian as an asset sale purchase just simply because they didn't have the technology, didn't have the money or the, to, right. to invest in the infrastructure. And if people wanted to want water, those 128, 138 people, uh, this, is, this was the only way to safely provide it to them. Yep. I mean, we... This has an on, been an ongoing story off and on, but this is... Uh, and the other problem is the, the, the fire suppression. I mean, the, yeah. whether there's enough water for the uh, water pressure for the hydrants there in the village. Uh, that's been an issue before. In fact, at one point, there was a number of years ago, there was a, there was a building that burned down because there was just no water in the hydrant. Uh, and... Um, in any case, so it's it's a story of you know uh, this is why we have uh, publicly owned utilities rather than privately owned. And uh, then uh, the, the the big uh, the big the big story the kicker at the end of this the ban on single use water bottles has been reinstated. <laughs> uh, eventually, oh, yeah. eventually. Oh, no, no, no. The, it has been reinstated. But, uh, no, okay. I yeah. think it's, uh, but not until September thirtieth. Not until <laughs> yeah. September thirtieth. Yeah. I know it's very confusing, and it's like a double negative. Yeah. The ban has been reinstated, which means that we have the ban again. But we we lifted the ban, or the ban was lifted, um, in part because of the situation in Housatonic, um, yeah. that people there don't have decent drinking water. I don't. I still don't understand why they have to use single-use bottles, um, since gallon bottles. Uh, can be poured into glasses. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, you can do that, uh, uh, and uh, you can actually get the water cooler for your own for your own house and fill your own small your right. own your own bottles, you know, it, it's, yeah. and your own containers exactly. that are reusable containers. So right, no, right. All right. That's well, that's the that's the first that's part. Our, that's our yes. That's our package of that's, news that, there. That's the opening right. salvo of this morning. Uh, right. The opening salvo, right? Um, um, but I would like to um, change the order a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. David put uh, our online magazine as the last on the list, but 
this is my baby. I want to move it up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, David, you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Um, I don't mind. Um, but anyway, you know, The Edge has, uh, for the last year and a half, published a really gorgeous um, magazine, a print magazine um, on places to go and things to do. Um, and uh, it was a beautiful, glossy magazine, and it was extremely popular. But when the pandemic began, we couldn't we couldn't do a print magazine anymore. First of all, because of the long leads with a print magazine, you know, we we'd have to know what was happening almost two months ahead, and that was impossible. And also, we distribute this free all around the. Uh, County and into Connecticut and New York State, and there were no high traffic zones or no high traffic locations to distribute it to. So we took it online, and uh, so we did that for the May issue, and now we have done it for our August, September, and October issues. So there are um, several really wonderful features uh, available. One is a, we have a description of about 13 towns in our area, including Salisbury, Connecticut, and Hillsdale, New York, and the southern uh, towns of Vermont, and also the western towns of uh, Massachusetts, small towns along the border. Um, so we, there we have you know, sort of everything that's happening in each one of these towns, things to see, what restaurants are open, what, what times they're open. So it's a really wonderful directory of what's happening in your town in nearby towns. Um, then uh, we have some really fun articles about things you can do safely. We have uh, um, a suggestion of road trips. Um, we have a uh, very interesting article about the marble industry in the Berkshires, which was a huge driver of the local economy in the 18th and 19th centuries, um, and where now you can you can visit uh, old quarries, but where you can see the marble. I mean, for example, in the town of Lee, you know, there are houses made of marble and um, fence posts made of marble, and there's a marble street, for obvious reasons, <laughs> named, named Marble Street. Um, so we have that. We have uh, um, places where you can rent boats um, up through October. Um, so it's, it's a really terrific resource, and you go to the Berkshire Edge, click on the menu, and click on magazines. Now, in your story about Marvel, do you talk about yeah. Mar Marvel Town? <laughs> no, no. That's an no, Ulster, we don't talk about Marvel Town. Where is that? That's in Ulster County, New York. Uh, oh, no, no, fact, no. Well, that's <laughs> out of our reach. Because <laughs> you're, you're you're saying this, and I'm flashing back through my like, where have I heard Marble? Mar and when I yeah. lived when I lived over there, of course, there was Marble Town, and, right. and I'm not sure whether it was because of there's Marble or not, but probably somebody by the name of Marble uh, ended well, up moving there originally. So. <laughs> well, no, they may have. You know, there is a lot of Marble here in the Berkshires, um, and it you know, and the mining became, and the mining was very labor intensive um, and it and but it went on really until World War two and then um, it was suspended during World War two and after that instead of marble people started using Portland cement um, as the new sort of building material and uh, the marble industry never really recovered after the war but uh, marble from the Berkshires is on the Washington Monument. It's on the U.S. Congress. Um, it's on the uh, um, the the um, State House in Albany. So I mean, it's really I mean, it's a and it is visible in many locations around the Berkshires too. So it's I mean, it's an interesting story. Um, uh, um, and we also have a, you know, an hour and six minute film <coughs> embedded in, I mean, which is a tour and a visit to a, an old marble um, quarry and how it works. So it's, you know, what what the machinery was. What, so it's it's very interesting. And the beauty of online publishing is that we can embed this film right into our site. And yep. you know, all you do is click on it, and it starts to show. All right. So, uh, I want to move Thank on. You. That's yeah. all right. That's all right. I want to move on because. Can I? Can we? Can, Marshall, can we? Can we keep going 
Backwards? Yes. Well, item number five, I think, is kind of important. I would, I would think so. We, inter- we interviewed the Region 1 Superintendent, Lisa okay. Carter, who, the, who yeah. they've done a great job in setting things up. And basically, they, when we finished the interview with her, uh, I think administrators and teachers and everybody have done all they can do. Uh, people just have to know that uh, expect the unexpected. And I think that goes the same with the Berkshire Hills Regional School District. Right. They're setting up a hybrid model yeah. of uh, learning for the, to start the school year. Um, and uh, uh, it's, you know, they're trying, trying to do what they can um, and trying to figure out how to reopen schools during this, during this pandemic. Um, so they're, and they have, of course, different competing ideas about how to do that, but the, uh, the, the Berkshire Hills Regional School Committee um, voted to open the school year on September 14th uh, with just remote learning, uh, and uh, uh, except that the high-need students would receive in-person instruction, um, and that all students enrolled in, this, in the hybrid model would, would begin October 5th. So this is... Uh, this is about what, what they're 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 trying to manage the education, but at the same time, uh, be be safe, and uh, it's it's tricky. You know, well, it's what's tricky about it is, and I think people are going to think that once the okay day one school starts, that things are gonna, are, are going to stay constant. They're not. Just look what happened in Danbury uh, a couple of days ago, where what happened? Oh, uh, uh, out of nowhere. Uh, out of nowhere, uh, 500, 500 COVID nineteen uh, cases. Oh my God. Yeah, in uh, all, Danbury, Connecticut. In, Dan, really? in, in Danbury, and and a lot of them were high school aged. You know, people registering to go to school, going to college, and everything like that. So you just don't know. I mean, that's not going to happen every place. But right. I think what administrators have to point out to the taxpayers and to the parents and to the teachers and to the students. They're doing the best they can with limited information and right. just be prepared for anything or nothing. You know what I mean? It's right. just one of those it's just one of those situations where uh, you've got to you got to start someplace and we'll see what happens once we start. And and the, the rule is that you know people have to be safe here. Yeah. And um and we'll 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 adapt as we as we have to. It's, but I know it's it's really these plans are all rolling plans, and, and and on top of that, they're local plans. But then again, yep. the state health departments will also get involved if something happens. So it, there's just so many factors that are involved in this. Uh, I th- I give a lot of credit to these administrators, and I don't do this often, but for <laughs> for, for for setting up, working hard through the summer, and yep. trying to get school started, and then take it from there. You know. Yeah, and and you know, also this is a situation I don't think they've faced before, something like this. Um, no, 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 not at all. That, you know, so they're they're uh, being innovative, um, and uh, uh, hopefully all our students and the rest of us will get through this without uh, without getting uh, ill. Yep. It's the yeah. best we can do is just move forward one step at a time and and see yeah. what happens and everybody be patient with one another. That's all you can. That's all you can ask for. I know. Yep. I know. Yeah. Um, you know. There. I mean, I feel so badly for parents who have been home with their kids. You know, it's hard to be patient. They've been patient since March. Um, it, it, and uh, um, yeah, know, the nurse. And the kids are getting so restless. Everybody's nerves are at, at, at right. instead of coming off a of summer, being relaxed and being uh, having your nerves qualified. Your nerves are are everybody is just going into the school year as tight as a drum. So just right. uh, uh, the word "be patient" is is, is all you can yeah. you can put yeah. forward. Be be patient. Wear your damn mask and do your social distancing, and then <laughs> see what happens. You know? <laughs> Honest to gosh, really. Yeah, right, right. No, uh, are you, are you, it sounds like you're uh, speaking to. Uh, uh, someone in the White House about that. I, I, I'm speaking to so, you, there's a lot of people around here that 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 uh, that still uh, think that the mask is to protect them. It's not. <laughs> it's to protect us from them. It's from it's, them. From them. Yeah, yeah, right. it's, you know, well, it's, it's, you know, we we are 
we are in an age of lack of consideration for your neighbor. Absolutely. I want to move on here because uh, some some decent news, and that is uh, Berkshire Grown has issued their online guide of local farm stands. And if it's one thing that we have around here that we're very lucky at, and then it's local farm stands that put out really quality stuff that isn't uh, shipped in from like 25 hours away. Right. Oh, and, that's right. And this is also in our magazine, by the way. Um, we have the whole uh, um, we we have the whole guide online, and we're about to update it. And we're also about to uh, um, add an article about where you know apple farms and where you can pick apples in the you know in, in September and October. So, um, but yes, Berkshire Grown is a wonderful organization. They they they're trying to keep farmers farming. And they do everything possible to support local farmers. So it's terrific. Yeah, and this is, as I say, as we say here, there's a we have a link to uh, their, the Berkshire Grown uh, local guide to food in farms, and you can find out where to pick. Do you pick your own? Um, you can go out and pick your own uh, vegetables and fruit. So, uh, anyways, this is a Berkshire Grown is a wonderful organization and. Uh, yeah. uh, and as Marcy was saying, they do support the local uh, farmers. And 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 they, on top of supporting, they publicized it so more people know about it. I mean, there's a reason why when people come to visit our area, either whether they're from Boston or from New York, or one of the first places they go is a local farm market. <laughs> there's yeah, a reason. I, well, they should. Well, I've been eating local corn lately, yeah. um, and boy, is it good. <laughs> All right, I want to move on to the uh, uh, to the next story, and uh, that is uh, a Worcester-based uh, nonprofit is opening a drug a treatment facility in Housatonic. Yes, uh, they have uh, uh, taken over uh, uh, an old uh, bar and restaurant. An old, uh, an old restaurant um, in Housatonic that is uh, uh, had been uh, uh, gone out of business, and uh, this is a this is an under. This is a nonprofit organization, um, and they have a, a, a drug treatment center uh, for uh, uh, because because really there was a need a real need for this, and this is Spectrum Health Systems, a Worcester-based nonprofit group. Um, it's an outpatient facility, and um, because there's been a, a real demand for uh, treatment in South Berkshire County. Um, because in North in North Berkshire, up near Pittsfield, uh, there are tr- there's treatment centers there, but not down here. In fact, you know, people who were having trouble with drug addiction, uh, you know, would would have to be would have to drive would have to be, drive or be driven um, to Pittsfield previously for treatment, and uh, so now there we have a local uh, a local center for that. All right, and one more story, and that is the Tanglewood Music Center and their live concerts, their streaming concerts, uh, and people can still enjoy. <laughs> yes. you know? That's right. Uh, Tanglewood is making do, <laughs> as, yeah. as, as everybody else is, um, to uh, uh, with uh, online, so that you can. Uh, we have a story about a recital of Mozart and Schubert. Uh, with some string musicians from the uh, from the BSO, and uh, it's it's uh, the the streaming is available for until uh, Friday, August twenty eighth, and we have a link to the uh, to the to the uh, video of them uh, playing, and uh, it's a fifty seven minute video, <laughs> so it's. Uh, but it's would, only available till the twenty eighth. Till the twenty eighth, right? It's Friday. Friday. So, people are want to hear some some really good uh, uh, chamber music, um, and the Schubert is really wonderful, by the way. Um, they uh, as is the Mozart. So uh, they should uh, go to our site and link to that to that uh, performance. Uh, those stories and many, many more, of course, uh, theberkshireedge.com uh, is their web location, uh, and they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
And uh, guys, we'll speak to you next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. take take care, Marshall. All right. Take care. Be safe, guys. Thank you. Yeah. You, you too. Bye. Bye. Uh, the uh, Berkshire Edge on air here on Robin Hood Radio.